We're ready? We're live. We're live. All right. Thank you, Jeff Sis. I got to gotta acknowledge Jeff Sis. He's my 15-year-old son who is better at electronics than I am. And thank you, Jeff Sis, for your help. Well, we missed last week. Sorry about that. My family had other plans. And so we ended up going to California for a little while and came back and we're ready to go at it. So I hope you had a a great week, great time off. We've covered the upper body strength training. We've covered the midsection strength training, and we've covered the lower extremities in strength training. And that was our number one request was strength movements. I shared strength movements with you. You can combine them in different ways. We have them on the Mr. Rebounder app. Tonight, the next request for this year was going over bone and joint health. And that's really important. And if you're young and you don't have any bone and joint health issues now, great. Then I can share with you some techniques that help mitigate any future bone and joint health issues or fitness issues. Um, if you do have some bone and joint issues, We'll see how far we can get tonight because what I'll be doing is I'll, I'll take you through some of the techniques that I've designed and developed over the years that have helped numerous people. Uh, it may not be a cure all for everyone, but it's helped a lot of people. And the key to that is getting rid of the stress, the tension, the inflammation, increasing circulation, um, and strengthening the supporting muscles, ligaments, and tendons around the joints. And so I'll talk about that and we'll start from the head and we'll go straight down. And these are remarkable techniques. They are very, very effective. If you know a physical therapist or you are a physical therapist, you might want to really consider implementing some of these movements into your, your program because one of the things that Solar Size does that, that's different than, from typical approaches, whether it's exercise or even whether it's physical therapy, is that we don't just treat the body as parts muscle groups and body parts, we continually treat the body collectively as a whole. So even though we're targeting or focusing on different areas of the body, the rest of the body is always involved. There's communication processes, there's circulatory system processes that are all occurring and we want to enhance that. If you look at um, oh, well, the current philosophy, I guess, of the Mm. pharmaceutical industries, the health industries, the fitness industry, the model is very much the same. It treats the body as parts or different. Um, well, in the pharmaceutical industry, you have a, a myriad of different pills that are designed to treat specific and different um, conditions. And often those pills create other conditions frankly, and then we need more pills to treat those conditions. Rarely is it treating the body collectively as a whole, and yet we're made up of cells, and our cells are imbued with an intelligence. They know better than any doctor or health practitioner how to create, maintain, and heal the body. So one of the things we want to do is learn how to work with the body more effectively. And when it comes to uh, the health industry, it's, they follow a very similar model. You have a myriad of various different um, products that we can take for all kinds of different issues, whether it's um, the herbal industry with all these various different issues that deal with all these various different functions or the nutritional industry. And you, you can fill a cupboard full of all these different nutritionals. They're, they're designed to treat the body as various different parts. I'm not saying that all that's bad. I'm just saying if the body had a smorgasbord of nutrients that it could choose from itself rather than trying to second guess what it needs. If in the pharmaceutical industry we knew how to enhance the ability of the body to do the job it already knows how to do rather than trying to control or manipulate it, then we'd be better, better off because we'd be working more harmoniously with the body as a whole. It's the same thing with the fitness industry. The fitness industry follows a very similar model. 
and they treat the body as all these muscle groups and body parts. And as a result of that, and you've heard me say it, I think I said it recently, you've got all the various different exercise equipment that are out there. The wedges, abdominal boards, rowers, ski toners, porta bike, fitness climbers, stair masters, health riders, Nordic track, Schwinn Airdyne, Life Cycle Life Force, Stomach Crunches, Thigh Master, Ab Flasters, Solar Flex, Treadmill Cyclones, Body Gyms, Total Gyms, Torso Track, Pelotons, the list goes on and on and on. And the reason it has is because there's a lot of different body parts and functions. And as long as we buy into those models, then we're constantly going to be adding to a collection of various different pills, treatments, um, devices that are working on treating the body in, as different parts. Because that's frankly, it's a way to make a lot of money and it's a way to, to, uh, to treat different areas of the body. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying that they're all bad, not at all. I'm just saying that when you treat the body collectively as a whole instead of as parts, if you're able to do that, then the body can respond, I think, in a stronger way to, to maintain, promote, and, and heal itself. And that's where cellular size is different. It doesn't treat the body as parts. It treats the body collectively as a whole. So even though you can focus on different areas of the body, and I've shared this with you, for example, if you want to work the core and you're with a typical exercise, you do a sit-up and it will focus the weight on a very select group of muscles right in the abdominal area. But when you're on a cellar sizer and you, you tilt backwards a little bit, all these muscles are automatically tight, they're strong. And as you move up and down, you leverage your own body weight at an angle. And that creates a lot more weight right here than just doing a sit-up like that but the rest of the body is still involved. So it's getting strong in an altered position. We want to reach our greater health potential. And even though we can focus on different areas of the body and that's not all bad, it's also important. That's what I'm saying in addition to all those other modalities, in addition to working more collectively as a whole um, is going to give us overall better health the water we drink, the air that we breathe, the things that we listen to, all of this plays a role overall in our ability of the body to reach its greater health potential. So I, I was talking to, to uh, chatting with Christine a little bit. Many of you have asked how she's doing. How's Christine doing? So I asked her um, what's been going on in her life today and she, she responded, she's graduated. She was given the Utah State Star for the small business DC last September in Nashville. She left Snow College on December 31st. She started a new job January 2nd and she's loving it. She says she's healthy and in her BMI range. She says 50s have been a challenge, but she works through them. She says, I exercise every day, getting ready for my ninth child to be married. My youngest graduates in my youngest graduates in May, and she's got 15 grandchildren already. So um, she sent us a quote. She says, "This is from Leonardo da Vinci. He had a good take on health too. It had long since come to my attention that people of accomplishment rarely sat back and let things happen to them." They went out and happened to things. In other words, being proactive is very important and recognizing that the joy doesn't come in the destination. The joy comes in the journey. And it's important that we enjoy the journey. So as we're getting more physically fit and as we're getting healthier, find ways to, to be happy, to be grateful, to be thankful for the journey. And then when you get to the destination, you will have become the person through the course of the journey that will allow you to be able to enjoy the destination more effectively. So 
So thank Christine for that. All right. Corey says, I'm a trampolinist. All right, Corey. He says, I will say your rebounder will stand the test of time over any other brand. Thank you, Corey. Tessa writes, it is sad that so many people do not take their health seriously until they start having major issues. And by then it's too late for many of them. Rebounding is such a fun way to stay fit. Thank you, Dave, for all you do. Thank you, Tessa. It's so true. When we have our health, we can pursue our wealth and we can enjoy it. When we lose our health, we expense our wealth trying to get our health back again. Now, there's always we're always going to be tripped up. I mean, I've been tripped up many times in my life, too. But getting back to and, and taking the steps that help us to reach that greater health potential, which we all have, makes it easier to go through the challenges when we face them. So all of you who sell or size are working to take your health meter from center further over so that you don't get sick or if you do get sick, you can bounce back fast or you can um, fight it off more effectively. Okay, Kelsey says, I can't believe what better shape I feel I'm in after every workout. It's an amazing tool and takes aches and pains away like I've had a massage every time. Thank you, Kelsey. I can relate to it. And Reggie writes, I just noticed how beautiful and clear your skin is. I'm hoping my skin will look amazing as well as I continue to bounce on my cellar sizer. Thanks, Reggie. Don't look too close. <laughs> now, Colette, Colette writes, my orthopedist has this in their office. That is fantastic because when you stop to think about doctors and health practitioners and physical therapists and massage therapists and, and trainers, they should all have a cellar sizer. It is the warm up for all the tissue. It opens up the circulation. It's gentle. It's relaxing. It helps balance blood sugars. I mean, there's so many things that the cellar sizer can do to, uh, to prepare ourselves for a better experience, whether it's with our doctor, whether it's with our therapist, um, whether it's with our sports trainer. Um, it, it's, it just, it just enhances. Okay. One with the universe writes, after I broke my foot a long time ago, the podiatrist said I would feel less pain if I lose 75 pounds. I said, lady, don't you think I've been attempting to do that my entire life? If I could lose 75 pounds, I could fly to the moon. I haven't flown to the moon. However, I did lose 20 solid pounds. And this year, focusing on working out and allowing myself to eat reasonable portions, I've already lost seven pounds. This is a lifestyle change like I, like I did before. But this time, I'm reflecting on my beliefs that kept me from believing that other 60 the other 60 pounds will be gone in two years. Slow and steady, steady, loving, faithful. It's not so much the weight as optimal health is the goal, especially since I'm 68. And one with the universe, you know, I love it. I love the phrase, the thought, the process. Christine herself knows. I know cellar size becomes part of a lifestyle change. It's something we do. Um, again, people in their 90s now that have been with me for over 25 years and are still enjoying life. And and thank you for sharing your uh, your experiences with me. LeCook writes, you're in my list to invest in saving up for mine. <laughs> All right, LeCook. Hey, um, just to let you know, if you're ever interested in subtle sizer, we also, when you get ready to check out, we do have payment options, so you don't have to wait. Um, <laughs> we're getting low on inventory anyway. There's a lot of units out there that are using typical springs, hundreds of them, I think. And right now we're having a hard time getting our springs because we don't use the typical steel and our manufacturers don't necessarily like our material because it destroys their molds. So it destroys the spring molds. So we're, we have to change the mold to use this tungsten steel mold, but I won't produce it any other way. And so we are getting low on inventory. We'll probably be out of trifolds in about a week and a week and a half. 
and that means we have to wait until we have the right kind of steel because I'm not going to produce a cheap unit. So if you know anybody and they're looking for a trifle, I'm telling my seller size family, have them do it quickly. Um, otherwise, we'll have some apples for a while and we'll see how it goes. But um, I really appreciate all of the support, the sharing. We've had some great experiences working with so many of you and you've called and you've shared and I've asked many of you to write because the stories are just absolutely wonderful. Justice, did you raise your hand on something? Okay, thank you. All right, Barbara writes, <clears throat> I want to take a few minutes to share with you what I think about your rebounder and the great addition it has been to my life. I have chronic active hepatitis C. The way that it affects me is that I battle with fatigue and joint muscle pain on a daily basis. It was very difficult for me to exercise. I love walking, but it took its toll on my joints and seemed to increase my fatigue. Also, it was impossible for me to do during inclement weather, which in Missouri is often. When I heard about the rebounder, it seemed to be too good to be true. Exercise, easy on the joints and better than walking. I had to see this. In December, I gave myself a rebounder for Christmas and I was often jumping. Now for the results so far, as I was hitting midlife, I felt like everything was drooping, heading south, so to speak, instead of north. When I started jumping, my muscles started firming and now everything is once again heading north. The exercise is gentle and does not fatigue me. In fact, it seems to really aid in circulation, giving me more energy. I was bothered by what felt like congestion in my liver area. Now I can jump a short, gentle period and this congestion even clears. It truly has been a great addition to my life. My entire family, husband, 13-year-old son and my mother have now started jumping too. My mother at, oops, guess I better not tell her age, over 80, liked mine so well that she purchased one for herself. Thank you, David, for the time that you took to explain the rebounder to me and to help me get started jumping for life. And thank you for, for sharing that, Barbara. Daniel Wright, since, yes. Uh, Jody says, hi, Dave, what move should I not do with, my, with hip brewstick? I've bursitis. Been, bursitis. Mm -hmm. I've been taking it easy until pain subsides, but not stopping. Just want to know what to avoid. Hip bursitis. Yeah, we don't want to create more inflammation. Um, we want to be gentle on it, but circulation can definitely help also. We don't want to do anything strenuous, but the gentle moving up and down is very gentle. It's going to help increase that circulation. It's going to massage that tissue. And, and whether it's joint problems, elbow problems, knee problems, back problems. Um, it's, it's very, very gentle. Uh, rocking side to side is going to work that area just a little bit, but it's not, it's not tearing down. It's it, after you've warmed up the tissue, if you're able to do a gentle movement side to side, those things are going to be helpful for the, for the hips. I'd avoid um, some of the hip exercises um, until you feel more comfortable and then you can gradually work your way into that again. Um, Daniel writes, since rebounding these past, past five months, I've noticed improved mood, less impact on my joints when exercising, and increased recovery time in between heavier workouts. I've literally tore the cover off my measly mini trampoline that cost $40 at a local sporting goods store after one month of using it and decided it was time to get a cellar sizer. It has been worth the investment. And somebody once said, solar sizer, why do they so, cost so much? And many of you know this. It's because of the mat material. It doesn't stretch out. Leave it out in the sun, the rain, the snow. It doesn't matter. It's weather resistant. I use it so your feet don't pronate. You don't want the mat material stretching with the spring. It needs to move with the spring to support your alignment. The solar sizer mat material does that. It's a space age material made here in the United States. The steel we use in our springs, they don't stretch out. So they're going to, they're going to hold up. And it's, it's a one-time investment for a lifetime of benefit. That's what it needs to be. That's what I want it to be. If you use it correctly, it should last that. My unit's over 20 years old. This one's a little newer because we demonstrated what happens when you, when you spray it instead of putting a couple drops of oil. And this was extremely squeaky. And, and um, then I put a couple drops of oil in. And you can hear, hear how quiet it is now as I'm bouncing up and down on it. Okay. Thanks, Justice. 
Alan writes, Facebook live post. Okay, I just wondered what I'm doing wrong when I jump and my neck feels tight. You're not doing anything wrong. Seller size is exposing a weakness or a condition that you already have. So we're going to talk about the neck in, in just a little bit as far as neck muscles and joints and what we can improve, what we can do to improve the overall health and our fitness of the neck area. Bill writes, can rebounding act as a decongestant? helping me to remove mucus and phlegm from the body via the bowels, thus helping constipation as well. And yes, it's definitely. I, in fact, if you ever have a cold or an allergy or stuffing it in the head and you get on the cellar size and you move up and down, it helps to open that up. You may have a runny nose, but it helps to decongest. It's like taking a jar of water with a bunch of dirt clods. Consider those dirt clods just sitting there. They're closing up the pathways. They're, they're uh, congesting that uh, the the body when you start to move that jar of water up and down the pressure changes break up the dirt clots well it's the same thing with the subtle size the movement up and down helps to break up the it's wonderful if you have allergies um, but it helps to open that circulation up yes Jer Jessica um, uh, Susan says please show oh. where you oil it oh where you oil it okay on the subtle sizer the way to make it quiet is you just take a couple drops of oil, or I use a three-in-one oil. I take it outside, okay, and it's it's not that hard just to to lift it up and you know you just walk it outside and then I lay it back down, and then I start at the hinge, and what I do as if I were jumping on it. I don't turn it upside down. I just leave it like this, and then I just come back here and I pull. The spring cover back, I put a couple drops of oil here, a couple drops of oil here and here, and all the way around. And you can see when I do it, some of the oil can get on the inside of the, the cover, but it doesn't bother me, it's underneath. So I just pull back two drops of oil at this spot, this spot, this spot, this spot, all the way around. And then I get on it and bounce on it a little bit to move the oil. And that polishes the steel. So the steel over time gets more polished and, and quieter and quieter. Okay. <clears throat> Rebounding can replace enemas in order to eliminate stored fecal matter. Okay, I think it's a question. Um, replace enemas? Okay, I, the movement up and down on a solar sizer is wonderful. When you do the twist, you have the colon and the intestines moving up and down. As you twist with the moving up and down, it acts like a washing machine effect. Okay. I was wondering what you were just showing the oil. All right. Thank you. Sorry about that. It's always something. Okay, so this is three in one oil. And you can pick it up at most grocery stores in the household section or get it online at Amazon. Um, I like to use it. This is a, a newer bottle, which I like better than this one. But it, um, it just has a little drip spot, spout, and then you just, it'll drip through. That's why I do it outside. But it'll, it has the right viscosity and thickness. So it, uh, it's just, it's worked well for me. Now, we've had people try the things, and if that works, great. I haven't heard of anything that works better than this, though. But yes, Justice. Um, Bar Jaka says, what other changes you made with the fat eradicator on the app? Yeah, fat eradicator one and two are both on the app, and as well as a couple of weight loss programs. Um, and then we've got the strength movements. We've got the, the legs are going to be on the movement this week. We, we did that uh, a couple of weeks ago. How did everybody feel after that? I loved it. I thought it, that, that felt great. Um, I think going up and downstairs two at a time was even easier after that routine. So that was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, anything else? Um, Meridian says, hey Dave, Meridian from Fitter Girls, Georgia. Okay. Demonstrate the fat eradicator, please. Oh, so it's a whole program. The fat eradicator has got, uh, fat eradicator number one is 20 minutes long. So if it's on our... We did it live on our YouTube channel, 
but it's right there on um, our advanced section. So we'll pull this up. Hopefully you can see this. And when we go to, there's the fat eradicator right here. Um, so when you go to here, it's got all these movements and it's all designed just intense aerobic. Um, oh, I was setting up for the kids. So if you have grandkids and the kids and want to use a little superhero, you can, you can change the avatar. So that was what that was for. And then you just, yeah, you just, this warm up and you just go through it and I'll turn that down a little bit. And whoops. Okay. You just go through the different movements. So that's going to be the breathing technique. There we go. And, and then that's, that's going to be burning calories. I mean, that's using the big muscles of the body. They have a great demand for fuel. And so we use that. And so we, and then we refuel the, the thighs with more, more of the fuel so we can do it again. And so it's just basically, it's several movements like that. That's uh, the fat eradicator number one. And then for those who don't have that much time, we did fat eradicator number two, which is also very intense, but almost half the time. Okay. <clears throat> Are the rebounders you sell okay with multiple chemical sensitivity people? The ones I ordered before I had to send back immediately because they smell like toxic chemicals. Totally get it. Yes, we use a high quality vegan leather. There's no off gassing. The matte material, this here, that's what you want to be concerned about. That matte material is a polypropylene, but every fiber is put under nearly 200 tons of pressure every fiber i mean that thing is so incredibly dense that's why they make swimming pool covers out of it now um so it doesn't have the off gassing even our rubber feet they're not typical rubber they're a polymer rubber they're much more dense so they um we give them a lifetime warranty but they 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 hold up and right? so you don't have the kind of off gassing at all with the seller size as you would with rubber units or other other types of units okay uh, laura writes posture exercises please oh she's probably referring to what we did recently on the posture if we want to help strengthen our posture that's where we for example um, we talked about this recently we lift our chest up roll our shoulders back a little bit pull our chin in so we, we help to um, maintain the natural curvature in the neck. And when we're in this position, watch your television program and bounce. As you're doing this, it's helping to the muscles flex around the proper alignment. And that's what holds our alignment anyway. And it, I mean, what other exercises are going to do that? It's, it's so exciting. Okay, Lori writes, I have a 10 year, I have 10 year old sciatica. At least I think that's what it was. Never had an MRI. Have been to a chiropractor and physical therapy. Any suggestions on the cellulosizer? I jump 30 minutes, six times, six days a week. I don't feel pain much when jumping, just a little. I won't stop jumping, too important to me. I feel more pain when walking and sleeping. I was hoping that the cellulosizing for six years would go away. Any suggestions? And, and Lori, don't know what's causing it, but but there are supporting muscles and ligaments in the hip area. And that's part of what we're going to go over. And what we want to do is strengthen the muscles and increase that circulation. The muscles help support the hip. And then the increased circulation helps to relieve pain and increase the synovial fluid and, and uh, joint health. And so that's, um, that's, again, just gently rocking side to side, very gentle, very effective. If you take your fingertips, and you stick them directly under your hip when you're doing this, you're gonna feel a huge dynamic. These muscles are working. They're wonderful. This is a great technique. And again, I don't know any other exercises that are as effective this way because it's also increasing circulation. <clears throat> then loosening it, just doing a gentle twist. And as we're gently twisting, we're helping to relieve stress and tension, increase mobility and fluid movement, help to release um, any 
uh, stress and tension in that area so we can improve circulation. And then you've seen where I, I teach another technique, which I don't know how to do effectively any other way. Remember, we're moving fluid. We've primed the lymphatic system through the baby bounce, the health bounce. So as we're pulling that circulation, now we're moving that circulation to the, the bones and joints and areas that we want to focus on. And so this is one of the techniques we're going to come back on in just a few minutes. But when we keep the, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it later, but when we keep the hip straight ahead, um, then we take it to the next level. And we're dealing specifically with the hip joint area, which is right, right in here. Okay. Does rebounding help get rid of visceral fat? <clears throat> it can, yeah. Um, it, it, <laughs> there's so much that, it, that it's doing. We've talked about the genetics of the body and how that's different for so many of us. Um, often, the, the, as we are losing weight and increasing the intensity, then the body starts to work from the inside out at burning off weight. And then eventually we see it um, move to different areas as we continue to lose weight. But the, uh, the fast is, I tell men the same thing with the gut. I say, you want to get rid of the gut? Don't think you're going to do it doing sit-ups. <laughs> you need the big muscles to burn off the weight. And that's the jamba run. You know, that's going to be this movement right here. And just do repetitions of that. I mean, that's great. That's intense. But Okay. Also read that rebounding can be bad news for people who have been diagnosed with pinched nerves, osteoporosis, or sciatica. The sudden forces that allow us to rebound are strong and therefore strain our spines by compressing it. In other words, joints will stretch over time while pressure increases on discs. Is it true? Well, let's reason together on this. If, <clears throat> if our bodies are not getting enough circulation to the joint area. They can wear down. Walking or running, jogging, um, hitting a hard surface, that jarring effect, yep, it's damaging. And it, accumulatively, it can take far more out of you than it's ever gonna give you in return. So what's the difference between that, okay, and bouncing? Not all units are created equal. If you have a unit that is too soft, and you're gently moving up and down, then yes, it can create more compaction because it's just like taking, oh, what's a good example? Um, if you have a bunch of dirt and things together with air in it, and then you start to move it up and down and it just compacts more and more and more. Well, that, that can happen with units that are too soft. You get compaction. I've known many people that have started off on rebounders that were too soft that uh, within a short period of time, they were complaining about back problems and hip problems and knee problems. I get that because it's not strengthening the supporting muscles and ligaments. There's not enough resistance, but it's compacting it. What makes a cellar size a different? And I've been doing this for over 30 years. And I, I recognize over those 30 years what works, what doesn't work. And What's effective, what isn't effective. One of the advantages, big advantages of cellar size is you have without jarring, you have resistance, absolutely necessary. You have to have resistance to build up the supporting muscles and ligaments around the joints. If all you're doing is compacting and you're not putting enough resistance on it, then it's not gonna, it's not gonna support the joint, it's just gonna put more pressure on it. I hope that's making some sense. When you cellar size, you have weight, no question. You've got a weight on the body. Gravity alone creates it. But you've, and you've increased the weight of gravity. But at the top of the bounce, you release it all. You're, you're weightless. You're weightless and then with resistance. And then weightless resistance. Well, the resistance causes the supporting muscles, ligaments, fascia, connective tissues to become stronger. So they support the body more. I've been doing this for over, geez, well over 30 years. I'll have to figure out how many. Um, almost 35 years, and it hasn't compacted me. In fact, I'm now three quarters of an inch taller than I'd ever been in my entire adult life. I've been measured by three doctors and one attorney because the moving up and down 
helps to strengthen the supporting muscles and ligaments and increase fluid movement between the vertebral joints to the disc, as well as probably help straighten the alignment a little bit. We don't know why it happened, we just know it did. Part of it was probably imbibing the disc with more synovial fluid. There's probably a number of factors. But it's weightless weight, weightless weight. So over time, the body gets stronger. So as you are weightless and you're getting that fluid in between the joints, those supporting muscles and ligaments become stronger. We have people that have been advocates of, and, and they're fine, um, those inversion uh, tables. So you get on a table and it inverts and everything goes, you know, kind of elongates, taking pressure off the nerves. And, and that's, that's great. But the moment you stand up again, it's going to start to fall. It's, it's going to start to drop because we haven't done anything to strengthen the muscles that support the joints. And that's what solar size does. You are putting weight on those supporting muscles and ligaments, doing different movements to increase circulation at the same time. And then that increase of strength in those muscles and ligaments around the knees and the hips and the back and the shoulders, um, they help to retain that fluid. If it's too soft, then it just disappears again. I hope, I hope that answers that question. All right. Do cellar sizer steps get recognized with Fitbit? Mm, I know it does with an Apple Watch because we set it up on the program with the Mr. Rebounder app to do that. With Fitbit, you'll have to let me know. I, I've heard people say that it did, um, but I, I don't know how effective it is for that because on the cellar sizer, you can go really, really fast. And I know our monitor, when we attach the wireless module to the cellar sizer yeah it's it's sensitive enough that it's going to be it's going to be counting the number of steps all right why does my blood sugar go down immediately after rebounding but shoots back up like 20 minutes later with no food consumption well that's a good question your body i, do, I don't know i don't have an answer for that um, i know that cellar size helps to balance sugar levels out um, I don't know what's occurring within your body that, uh, or what you've eaten um, accumulatively or how long you actually cellar size. We do have a website called Cellar Sizer Diabetes Help, H E L P.com, with great customer reviews of people that have um, what they've experienced when they use the cellar sizer, and that, that might be something worth, worth looking at. Okay, so Juliana writes, I would love to know more about how to find clean water and good food to enhance our cells. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Eating as natural foods as possible is healthy. Um, I know we're exposed to pesticides and herbicides. There's a detox effect that takes place when you cellar size, which is helpful. Drinking good pure water is important. Um, balancing that water is also important. Not all water is created equal, that's for sure. Um, and we'll continue to work on that in the, in, in the future because none of us want to live in a dirty, polluted environment, and neither do the cells of our body. So, is it normal to feel dehydrated after using cellulosizer for a few minutes, two to five minutes? It's not normal. Um, but your body may be adapting, you may be adjusting, it's, um, and you may need more water. And that, that could be an indicator of that too. Yes, Justice. Um, Mari Nadeen says, I jammed my knee last year. I had to baby it for a long time. I'm still having trouble with it. It seems that my hamstring is not wanting to release right away. And it takes a minute for me to be able to fully extend my leg. Bullets, well, bullets in my leg. What exercises would help this? The most I'm concerned about re-injury. I just started. A, I just started back doing the easy rounds. Okay, we're going to come to that in our bone and joint health, um, and we'll talk about the the knee, and the the hamstring. I'll show you a technique that works with the back and the hips too. It's it's pretty. In fact, so I don't forget. For those of you who are watching, you might want to 
take a moment, and I've been sitting behind the desk all day long, take a moment and touch your toes or see how far down you can go to, to touch your toes and, and, and how that feels when you do it. And then we're going to do our little routine and we're going to see you're going to experience the difference that just a few minutes of cellular size can make on your body and why we should do it every day, I think. Yes, Justice. Sylvia says, Dave, did you make changes in straight shoes since I just do flat eye contact for certain moves? Okay. She, did I what? Make different? Did you, did you make changes in strength shoe routine? I have cloud icons that for certain moves. Oh, oh, the cloud icons, just download them. Just download them. What we did is we made certain movements, yes, and we've added those movements to the Mr. Rebounder app. If you've not downloaded them yet, then it may look like a little cloud. Just download them. That doesn't cost anything. It's just not part of your, um, your program yet. Once it's downloaded, then it it should stay downloaded, and you can just do all the different uh, routines. Zahara writes, "I sprained my ankle last night. Any advice for it with a solar sizer?" Yeah, um, been there. <laughs> Broke mine. If you get, um, if you have your balance bar, and you wrap your ankle to help support it, which is a good idea. I, when I sprained mine initially, when it was bad, I just bounced like this and allowed the circulation to improve, and it did. And then I get, get to the point where I can move it a little bit and then move it a little bit more. And then eventually I was able to sit here and put most weight on the left ankle, for example, and put my right foot down. And little by little, I was able to put more and more weight on it. And that, that helped, um, that helped it heal very quickly. And we've had many people that have done the same thing and their ankles have healed very quickly for them. Doctors know bones and muscles heal faster and grow stronger when exposed to some stress. That's the idea behind the walking cast as well. And cellular size helps to do it in a controlled way so that you help build and strengthen without um, tearing it down or, or hurting it. Yes, Justice. Um, Gabriella says muscle fibers store glucose for fuel. That's what glucose can lower during rebounder because the muscle uses glucose. Oh. Mm hmm Oh, she was just explaining. To yeah, okay. how, how it helps to lower blood sugar levels, and, and that's right. It, she posted that. Thank you. Thank you for posting it. All right. Zahar, okay. Susan writes, can I rebound if I have a small lower back injury? Yeah, you just want to start, and again, if you have a condition, check with your doctor or health practitioner, but there are many different approaches we can take on the cellular sizer to address weak areas while we build them back up. Um, this, if you can walk on the ground, chances are you can walk on a cellular sizer. There's less jarring on that than there is walking on the ground. So just standing here, rocking side to side, pushing down into the mat, um, rock, you know, things like this, you can determine. But, but this is all moving circulation. This is all increasing and helping to build improve flexibility. Um, and then we're going to show another demonstration in just a moment. Any good exercises for, um, what is a muffin top? I've heard of that. Is that the back I'm, I'm, um, or back rolls? And the, the kickouts work very, very well for it, but they're more advanced movements. You can start off very gently by holding, take the balance bar off so that I could show you some of these movements today. But, but if you have the balance bar connected and you're leaning forward a little bit and kicking your legs out behind, you know, this. Is it a muffin? Yeah. That extends what? Yeah, I have to click on one. Okay. <laughs> extends her, her eyes and through hip sweeps over the edge of the waistline. Yeah, okay. So that, that's the movement there. If you do this, the gentle twist as well, um, that, that's going to work all the muscles all around this area. But honestly, the Jamba Run is going to burn off the weight. And then that's... Because these, these muscles are too, I mean, you can strengthen the muscle, but those muscles are too small to burn off the weight. So, Lucy, any good ex? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Abigail writes, what happened to Christina? And we talked about her earlier, so thank you for asking. Um, 
and she's doing great, and she's achieving a lot, and we're happy for her. Okay, so let's start. <clears throat> joint health, joint strength, joint fitness, whatever you want to call it. These are techniques that I've shared with other people. They're techniques that I've done myself. They're techniques that have made a difference, and they might with you too. So let's talk about often headaches or migraine headaches or stress or tension um, in the head. We have little pressure points in the head. We have the skull, um, little spaces in the skull. When you take your fingertips and you literally massage your head, you'll notice areas that might have more, um, they might be more sensitive, more of, more of a pain area. And that's an area where we can open it up. That could be a blockage, that could be a poor poor circulation. And so when we take our fingertips and put it literally on our scalp, we can feel around with our fingertips. And that can change with people, but when you feel an area, and, and you may not, and that's fine, but when you feel an area as you're massaging it and you're moving up and down, those, those spaces in the skull, you can literally, as you're moving up and down, massage them and help release stress and tension in, in the actual skull itself. Yes, Justice? Oh, no. oh okay. And then, then we come to the temples. And when you come to the temples, it's the same thing. So we can feel in these little areas, if you notice any stress or tension, hold that position, work it a little bit while you're bouncing up and down. It'll release. And as it releases, that, uh, it starts to go away. And I really believe that improves circulation around the skull. And that's, there's a lymphatic system up there and, and surrounding the brain and whatnot too. And there's blockages that can occur. Then as we come down the skull, we come down to where the atlas sits here and you push up because there's a 15 pound head sitting on, on the vertebral joints there at, at the, in your, uh, at the atlas and it can build up stress and tension. So by taking those fingertips and really kind of pushing up into that area, you're moving up and down, which is moving fluid up and down. And then as you feel that area, it can be sensitive for some people. And the movement up and down can release that stress and that tension and increase that circulation. It's a technique that I've done for years. And it's, it's been very helpful. So it just, just open it up a little bit, push, massage those areas that ha might have some stress and tension in it. And the way I do that is I'm moving fluid up and down. So I push the fluid in and up. I push that fluid in and up. And yes, Justice. Okay. Oh, good, good. All right. And then as we come down, we come down to the jaw area. Now that's, that's an important area that people take for granted too. And we can build up stress or tension in the jaw. So by taking our fingertips again, and you don't have to do this every day, but you can do it once a week and it can make a big difference. But as we massage that area of the jaw, as we're moving up and down, we just kind of drop our jaw and feel in there and, and massage around those areas that we have that stress and tension in the muscles. And uh, again, why are we doing it while we're bouncing? Well, because the bouncing is causing all the fashion. Remember, we're treating the body collectively as a whole, not as parts. The whole body is involved. So we're moving circulation. It's weightless weight, weightless weight on all the tissue and the connective tissues. And then we're actually helping to release that stress and tension through those little movements. And that, that can be very helpful as well. And then, then we come to the neck. And on the neck, very important area. We start off gently, but again, you've seen me do this, and, and these are important, and they're universal pretty much with all the joints. We want to strengthen the supporting muscle ligaments around the joint, which is a weight-bearing exercise with resistance. So we have this resistance, so these muscles are having to get stronger, but at the same time, we're releasing that weight and we're pushing the circulation between the vertebral joints to the disc. And so we're just gently bouncing up and down. We're doing little circular motions and you can tilt a little bit. And if you feel any stress or tension in the muscle area, it's 
good chance that the vertebral joints there are also under stress or more pressure. And so by gently massaging that area, you can take those little points. If there's any bumps in that area, you can massage and help to open up the vertebral joints in that neck area again so we can increase flexibility and strength. Most people will not do that. And yet, when you do do it, your ability to have flexibility in your neck, and it, it helps, and that's a good thing. We also want to make sure that the bones are in good health, so we don't get bone spurs or too much pressure on, on those areas too. So again, this gentle motion here over time can help increase that flexibility, and you will find areas in your, of your own that are more sensitive. And just, just work them. Just work those areas. And I mean, it's most, again, most people won't do it. And it's, it's real important. So then we come from here down to the shoulders. Shoulders are an important one. And on the shoulder joints, if we, this is what I did too, is if we take our elbows and stick them straight ahead, bounce up and down, take your hands, feel, feel the muscles on your shoulders. This is an excellent one for physical therapists because it's really massaging the tissue, the ligaments, the, the tendons. The, and we're going to be working with that whole rotator cuff as we're, as we're doing this. But we've got the elbow straight ahead, and we do this for a few moments. And then we want to lift the elbows up over the head. And if you have trouble doing that, you can help support it with, with one arm. Uh, and you don't have to go that high. Just go to the point where you feel some resistance. And when you feel the resistance stop, gently bounce up and down. That dynamic that you felt when you were doing it here is still taking place at the cellular level all throughout that whole joint and shoulder area. And then after a few moments up here, we do it out to the side. And these movements are, all of these movements I've just showed you are on our, other than the skull one, they're all on the Mr. Rebounder app. So, I don't think that one's on there. I'll have to check. And then just keep doing it. Um, these little movements up and down. As you get better, then you can leverage more weight to strengthen the shoulders more. So instead of here, you're now here. And you can open up the shoulders and strengthen the, the muscles of the shoulder. And these are all on the Mr. Rebounder app as well. We'll put together a routine. It will be on the Mr. Rebounder app. Um, and then I think we have... We have some of them on there now too. Um, and then over your head. And if you feel resistance, your body's telling you something. You probably need to work on that. And then out to the side. Um, and then back again. Those are all shoulder and it's leveraging the weight so that the muscles and ligaments get stronger. But that's a graduated movement. We don't start off with that. We start off with that as we get stronger. Yes, Jesses. Oh, okay. All right. So then, um, then we want to open up the shoulder more. And this is a great technique, is when you take your forearm and hook it underneath up above the elbow on your arm, and then we're going to open up the shoulder here. So we want to increase flexibility and strength. You just kind of, and the scapula, this works to the back of the shoulder blades too. So as you pull it this direction and hold the position, then gently bounce. So let the movement move that tension and increase that flexibility. Yes, Justice. Um, Sean says, what will it be called in the app? Uh, bone and joint fitness or joint fitness. Yes. And Ben says, what about tight trapezes? Yeah, the trapezius muscles. Okay. Um, the shoulder movements. Okay. Thank you. Let me come to that. So the other one would be, and this, that's on our video as well. So you take and you pull the other shoulder this direction. Again, you're going to feel that stretch. Now let's move some fluid. Let's move some circulation. Let's massage that tension away. Let's open up those shoulders. Um, trapezius muscles. Okay, then we're going to take, and this is going to help with that somewhat too. Then we take our our arms to open them up further and that will open up this whole area as well is you take and grab grab your elbow and just kind of hold on to the elbows 
And when you feel the tension, just gently bounce. You're helping to open up this whole area, which is going to be going to be helpful. Um, and then if you take and just do the hip rock a little bit, just a little gentle movement, you do the same thing here. This is excellent for the trapezius and all these muscles. So it's just a gentle movement, which is also helping all along the spinal column, all along the vertebral joints. So we're going to come to that in just a moment. So this gentle movement right here is going to you drop, you step into the mat, drop the shoulder, step into the mat, and drop the shoulder. And as you, you want to think in terms of lifting your body up, so you get some stretch, you have that lifting of your body as you rock side to side. And this gentle movement side to side, you'll feel that. If you have tight trapezius muscles, you'll feel it as you're dropping down. If you've got tight, um, a tight area in the scapula, you'll start to feel the, that stretch in the scapula. If you have the tight area in the lower back or around the hips, you're going to start to feel that gentle stretch helping to open up each one of those areas. And then from here, and it's, now it's the second most important physical exercise for bone and joint health, is you lift the heels up and down and just gently do the twist. And as we're gently doing the twist, now we're moving all the muscles. We can take the arms, lift them up, work the upper back. This is also helping the shoulders and the scapula area as well. So we're just gently twisting, and it's, that's what we want. We want to be flexible. And as you move the arms down, you work, concentrate more on the lower back. Those are excellent movements for bone and joint health. Now let's talk about the hips. So on the hips, and this is what we were mentioning earlier, we do, and it's so important to get circulation to the hip area, to, to strengthen those supporting muscles and ligaments around that joint. You don't want hip problems. Um, just rocking side to side is, you know, that's, again, take your fingertips, stick them in your hip, feel the muscles working. You're really targeting that hip area. And then the twist is great for all the muscles that wrap around these joints here. And then for people that are dealing more with a sciatic issue, we want to open up the, this joint area here and loosen these muscles. And so as we're doing it from here, we just now keep our hip straight away. And it's just done right in the hip socket area to open up that, that whole hip joint. So important. And then we've got the elbows. And people have elbow problems too. And Justice, can you grab that um, Dyna ball that's in the cupboard? If you open it, yeah, it's on the other side. Other, other side. Yeah, that orange, I think it's orange, orange or green or it's orange. Good. Okay. So for elbows and for hands and for fingers, um, I like this little Dynaflex. It's a, it's something that will help with the wrist and the joints in the wrist, with the fingers, with, um, with the elbow, and you're still cellarizing. And there's techniques you can do without that, such as gently moving up and down. And as we feel the pressure at the tips of our fingers, you hold your fingertips straight down until you can feel a throbbing. And then when you feel the throbbing, you know that you're moving the lymph system. You've got the lymphatic system, which is a vacuum. It pulls circulation. It's sucking circulation through the tissue spaces and the bones and joints because you've primed it by doing the baby bounce for a few minutes. And this movement up and down when you feel the pressure at the tips of your fingers, now start to move your fingers. You know, as you're moving the fingers, you're pulling the circulation between the bones and joints. It's wonderful. You can wiggle the hands a little bit, and sometimes it gets worse before it gets better when you do that. So it's, uh, if you have blockages or poor circulation, then that's okay. You're gonna, it's like a, a dam holding back water. You get the pressure building up against the dam. It doesn't feel very good, and then all of a sudden, boom, it breaks through the dam, and it can start to flow and circulate better. So it's a, it can be a process. But as we do this, and we wiggle our fingers a little bit down here, then we lift them up here. 
and then move them around. So we're constantly moving the fluid up and down, bathing the bones and the joints and the ligaments and the tendons and, and the nerves all around these areas of the body. I think it's, it's just wonderful. For the wrist um, and the elbows, again, the Dynaball, this little guy here, you can get him on Amazon. This one's called a Dynaflex. Um, you have a little cord that you can wrap and pull it, and it's a gyro. And I'm going to try to do it on the carpet here, so um, you get it going. And as you get it going, you're working. You can see the wrist. The fingers are working. They have to hold on to it as well. Um, and then if you move your arm up and down, you, you're actually working the, the, uh, the tendons in the joint and the shoulder muscles as well. So you can get a couple of these. I've done that before. Um, and just do it occasionally. You don't have to do it a lot unless you have some issues and you're working on those issues. But if you have um, problems in the elbow, you'll probably feel this for a while. But it's, over time, it can help increase the flexibility and the strength. And remember, you're still solarizing, so you're still moving fluid to those areas of the body. I hope you were able to hear that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's talk about the back, because that's a real important one. The back, the hamstrings, the knees. Um, there's several techniques on the Mr. Rebounder app that I teach that are designed to open up the vertebral joints in the back, take pressure off the nerves, increase circulation, or provide for more flexibility in the back. And they can start with very simple movements, such as taking the right elbow, sticking it up over your head, tilting gently to the, in this case, the left, your right. And as you, I'm tilting, I'm opening up the vertebral joints in the back. I'm opening up the space between the discs. The moment I feel you want to be lifting your body up, so you're kind of standing tall, lift it up, then tilt. The moment you feel any tension, just stop, hold the position, gently bounce. You want to find those little tense areas and then gently allow the movement to move fluid and to massage that tension away. You don't have to overstretch. And then you do that for a few moments. And then do the same thing on the other side. Lift that elbow up, lift it up over your head. You're standing tall and you just gently tilt to your left, my right. And just when you feel that tension, just stop, hold the position. That's the first step. And we're, so we're going to go through some graduated steps here. But that's designed to open up the vertebral joints, increase circulation, just take pressure off of the nerves in the back. And then that's when the balance bar comes in handy. You can hold on to the bar. I lift my elbow up, lean again to the left. And now as I'm bouncing up and down gently, I'm going to take my right foot and cross it in front of the left foot. If you're standing tall, if you have any tension in the lower back, this movement right here can help open up the vertebral joints in the back, increasing flexibility, circulation, taking pressure off the nerves. Then we do the same thing the other side. Very often, if you have a little curvature in the back, you're going to feel it more on one side of the body than the other. Yes, Justice? Um, Gita says, what meat is good for a metro or a sardia? For what? The metatarsal. There you go. Okay. Um, okay. Metatarsal, where is that? Is that in the foot? I'm trying to remember where that metatarsal Ask him, solar size family, where the metatarsal is because my mind went blank. Um, all right, so that's that area of the, the body, and we're going to, um, geez, that's going to bother me. Um, we're going to work after the back. Let's work on the, um, okay, we did the twist. Okay, so now, oh, and this movement right here, every day I think this is a really good one. The ball of the foot. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, we're going to come to that. All right, and 
In fact, I broke my metatarsal. What am I talking about? <laughs> um, that happens. So you're rocking side to side. As you're rocking side to side and dropping the shoulder, um, you're also moving all the vertebral joints and loosening up those muscles and increasing that circulation to that back. Always end up after doing this here. And as you lift this heel or this knee up and the shoulder up, you can feel that, that um, pulling in the back um, along the, the hip. So if they're tight. And then let's work on the knee and the uh, hamstrings and in the back. And this is a very effective routine. I, in fact, you, it, I hopefully many of you tried to touch the floor before you started, if you do this. But this one here is, and you've seen me do it, is great for the back, is wonderful for the shoulders. You can use the, uh, the mat it's, or the frame itself. As you bend over, you grab the frame and you just rock back. And as you rock back, you feel that stretch in the back. And you just hold that for a moment. It just, it really, I, I feel, it feels great. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the left foot in this case. Take that right foot, lift it up, and then gently bounce, just like this. And you, and, and you should feel that. If you have tight hamstrings, you pull your toes up a little bit, you may feel it in the calf muscle behind the knee. You may feel it in the... Um, the upper area of the hamstrings and you just hold that position gently bounce it makes a difference and as you do that for a moment then come back around here go the other direction lift the toes up pull them back some and then bend at this knee and do the same thing and see how it feels on the back I can't tell you until you've experienced how effective this can be and then you can do that a few times just up and down again to loosen that tension and then we're going to end up with the gentle the gentle um, twist again to help restore balance or homeostasis in the body and then when you get better at this you can take your hands and just kind of drop them down and if you want to compete with yourself, you can see how far down you can, you can get and touch the ground. And I just heard my back pop, which felt good. Um, but, and then gentle twists again to, uh, to loosen the stress and the tension. And then when you're done to know how effective it's been, then you come back over here and put your hands on the floor or see how much further you can go down. For me, it's easy. And then I'm back up. I couldn't do that before, but now it is. So what we just did is we open up the, the bones and the joints. Each one of those movie, movements is wonderful. You don't have to do them all. You can pick the ones that you want to work on, but working from the top down, those are phenomenal techniques. You're not just moving body parts. You're moving body parts and collectively moving the entire body as a whole. So communication channels, circulation, strength, everything is working at the same time that you're working to, to move and, and get those, those bones and those joints uh, more fit and healthier. Yes, Justice. Paul says, hi Dave, I've been saving up some questions. Okay. It was too easy. So I went up to number nine. The last oh. one was my was my thinking correct on that. Yeah, um, you build your way up. Yeah. Is doing a workout twice a day instead of once a day, or is that overdoing it? Is doing a workout a play in? Let's call it a play in. Is playing in twice a day instead of once a day a good idea? Of course. I, you know, if you can do, if you can play in three times a day or five times a day, it doesn't. It's going to make a difference. Okay. Um, as far as your, your overall results and how you feel and the stress or the tension you build up in the body. And um, yes, play in as much as you want. 
And it's not a workout, it's a play. And you play on it, it works on you. Have fun, enjoy it. Um, think positive, enjoy the journey. See yourself not just as you are, but as you can become. Hold on to that vision for a step of faith. It's not that the conditions around us change, but the conditions within us start to change. So we respond differently to the conditions around us. Enjoy the journey. You've heard me say it. We can't find happiness at the end of the journey if we don't bring it with us along the way. Bring it with you. Then you enjoy the destination as much instead of being disappointed. So many people feel that they have to reach a destination. They reach the destination. It's still, it's, it's not going to give them the happiness and joy that they were seeking. Develop the happiness and joy in the process along the way. Think of all the reasons that you can be happy and be grateful and it will change you uh, in, inside and how you respond and how you feel and how you how you grow yes justice um he also says um you mentioned for insomnia getting up and doing a gentle baby bounce if i do more rigorous baby bounces is that like terminal to sleep everybody's a little different on that um it depends how much stress or tension you're carrying most people if you look at a baby and, we, and I just kind of, I learn from my environment a lot. Um, and I hope I learn a lot more. <laughs> but if you look at a baby, instinctively a parent will take a baby when a baby is fussy and gently bounce the baby up and down. It releases the stress and tension. The baby can relax. Well, we're no longer babies and we can't be put over somebody's shoulder. But we can stand on a cellar sizer and we can just gently move up and down and relax our shoulders, our back, our buttocks. And doing this for a few minutes, it helps to get rid of the stress, the tension in the body. Just kind of think of yourself like a little rag doll. Just don't fall off. And as you, as you loosen up the stress or tension, then go directly to bed. And because you don't have to toss and turn um, like you were before in most cases. Now, in some cases, it could take a little time to get there but it's worth pursuing. Um, he also says, um, when do you know when it's time to move up to the next level on the Mystery Runner app? The one I'm doing now, I think, would give me a workout as long as I use it. Oh, good. Keep using it. If you want to try something different, try something different, see how it feels. And just uh, listen to your body. And that's a good indicator. And that's one of the things about cellar size that I think is unique also is that we become more in tune with our body. We've, we're more connected. When we're doing the twist, we're thinking about our digestion, elimination, our liver, our kidney, our spleen, our gallbladder, our pancreas, our adrenals. And, you know, we're doing this. We're, we're actually connecting more with the body. I think that makes a difference um, in, in how we feel and how the body can perform. Yes, Jess. Um, he also said... I have hypnosis. My head takes words from my body. Any suggestions on a way to correct that using the cellar sizer? Yeah, that's the one technique I was sharing with you where he's talking about his head sticking forward. Um, is where we <clears throat> lift our body up, tilt our shoulders back a little bit, take our chin, and gently pull it in a little bit and then bounce. Over time, you can pull it in a little bit more. But don't overdo it when you first begin because you don't want to pinch a nerve. And it takes some time. Also, and also any exercises for developing strong glutes? Yeah. Yeah, those are the more advanced techniques. And, and again, <clears throat> another one for the knee, and you've seen me do it, is when you put your hand on a table and you jump up and come down, bend in the knee, jump up, come down, bend in the knee. This movement here, I like to put my hands on the table so I can focus more, less on balance and more on the knee, but it's, it's the same principle. Um, and that opens up the, that whole knee area too. And then, <coughs> excuse me, kicking backwards for the glutes. I mean, that, I don't know of anything. In fact, you see people do techniques where they, they're doing this. And you know, ballerinas and whatnot, they're, they're really working those glutes. On the cellar sizer, we can lean forward, lift our leg up as we're coming down. It leverages more weight in the buttocks, and that helps to lift, tighten, and tone the whole backside. So, again, 
hold on to the balance bar for most of this and just kick the legs up behind you. I like to do a little jumping jack area, but, but as you're doing this, you come down with one leg up, you're working those muscles and the lower back. Start off gently though. Yes. Sharon yes. Adams says, how soon after a small bladder surgery is it safe to get back on the rebound day? That's a good question. Again, I don't know your medical condition, so it's best to consult with your doctor to find out what limitations you might have for activities. Cellular size is gentle, um, gentle movement side to side after the baby bounce, gentle movement side to side can be helpful in to promoting the healing process. If, if that's too much, and again, check with your doctor, the technique where you lie down on the unit and somebody else bounces you up and down, that can be like heaven. <laughs> you put a little pillow behind your head, <coughs> put your feet up on the chair and let them bounce you. It's massaging the internal structure, helping to promote circulation, reduce inflammation, <coughs> and promote faster healing. So that gentle movement can be very helpful. I should say healthful and gentle movement up and down. Gentle rocking side to side can help promote the healing process. But again, check with your doctor. Or <coughs> feel free to have your doctor call me. I got some water. Um, any other questions? That's all. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. If there's anything that I said that might be beneficial to somebody that you know, please share it with others. You have been, and it has made a difference. And every week now it's growing. The people that we have a chance to talk to, they're calling me because you've shared it with them. So thank you very much. Remember, we don't have to work out when we play in. And feel free to give me a call if I can be of any help. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. And we'll do another program. We'll announce what that's going to be. I think we went through most everything today. Um, the only thing we didn't deal with were ankles. And I was just real quick, just lift the heels up and down. And you're going to be strengthening all the supporting muscles and ligaments around the ankle as well. But yes, Justice. Um, Sherry says, I'm sorry, Dave, but did you say how long to baby bounce before bed? <clears throat> For what? Before bed. Oh, yeah. Uh, two to three, mi three minutes. It's a long time. <laughs> um, that three minutes of gentle moving up and down can release the stress and tension. You can do longer, but it's, um, you want to prime the lymph system, get the circulation moving, break up any trapped blood proteins, open up the circulatory channels, get rid of the stress and tension. And that gentle movement is so relaxing. So thank you again and for everything. You guys are great. Um, if you know people that really want a cellular sizer, tell them to consider getting as soon as possible only because we're going to be sold out probably for, for a little bit of time until we can get our, our steel springs in there. We'll still take orders though. But uh, thank you. Thanks for being a part of the cellular size family. Thank you for making a difference. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.